say a statement that everyone's going to agree with as if it was controversial. I'll go first. The GoPro Hero 5 Session was the best action camera ever made for FPV. But the things that made this camera so desirable to FPV pilots made it completely undesirable to the general population. It was lightweight. It was about 50 grams lighter than the other stuff that was out there. Who cares? You hang your GoPro on the side of your car or on the side of your motorcycle or on your ski helmet or whatever. No one cares about 50 grams. And it didn't have a screen, which made it way more durable. But you had to get the app out. You had to get your phone out if you wanted to interface with it. Nobody wants that. They just want a screen. And if they care about durability, they'll put it in a big plastic case and, oh my God, you'll add 20 grams of weight. Who cares? So GoPro killed the Hero 5 session and FPV pilots have been begging them to bring it back ever since. And that's why this camera is so interesting because the DJI Action 2, that's the footage you're looking at right now, it is in many ways the spiritual successor to the Hero 5 session. It's lightweight. It is lighter even than the Hero 5 session. It is smaller, but it is not without its problems. It's only got internal storage. You can't put an SD card into it. It, uh, it has a built-in non-changeable battery, so once your battery's dead, you got to just stop and recharge it. It's uh, got some problems with overheating, some people have reported. And, uh, yeah, it's expensive. It's like 500 bucks for what you're looking at now. You get a Hero 10 for that price. Or you get a Hero 8 for way less than that. So, the question that we're going to tackle today is, is the DJI Action 2, the successor to the Hero 5 session that FPV pilots have been begging for. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Both of the cameras in this video, the DJI Action 2 and the GoPro Hero 10, were purchased by me with my own money. Thank you, patrons, for making this possible because DJI did not include me in their release. Uh, I have not received any compensation in exchange for this video, and no one has had any pre-approval or even seen the contents of this video before the release. So here's the DJI Action 2, and it, it, first thing you're going to notice about it is it is tiny. It is so small. Like compared to the Hero 5 Session, it's just a little bit bigger from the front, but it is significantly thinner and lighter. DJI Action 2, 55 grams. Hero 5 Session that we all, oh, it's so light. 72 grams. Action 2 is like two thirds the weight of the Hero 5 Session. It's really light. There's a single button on the top that's used for power and record. And if we turn it on, we can see there's a screen. It's going to be dark because I've got it up against the bench, but it's a touch screen. So you swipe down to get to certain menu options. By the way, definitely turn on the pro option, which gives you access to manual white balance, manual exposure, and other settings that pros are going to want. If we swipe from the left, we can set the exposure, the color. It's got a, it's got a log profile, log color profile. If you're into color grading, we'll take a look at that a little later. Uh, the white balance can be manually set and you can change the field of view. Uh, we'll be doing a field of view comparison also. If we swipe up from the bottom, we can set the resolution and it goes all the way from 1080p up to 4K with frame rates uh, between 60 and as much as in 1080p, 240 FPS. Now, if you've been paying close attention, you may be noticing something that's missing, which is there's no SD card slot and there is no USB slot. All there is are these little contacts on the underside of the camera. And that is the only way to interface with the camera. So right now the camera is being sold with this screen module and the screen module also has a battery and has a USB and an SD card slot. So it's going to connect up. It connects magnetically and it has these clips here. And when we do that, we will have a front facing camera. Hello. Hello, Joshua. So you could use it as a vlog or whatever, or just use it. To, Hello. How are you doing there, Joshua? Um, the front facing camera is a full touch screen. So the exact same interface can be used from there. It's exactly the same as the back. Now you notice when I plug that in, it said touchscreen battery 9%. So this has a battery in it and this has a battery in it. And battery life is one of the gotchas with this camera that we are going to be discussing. But suffice it to say, you will not be 
just pulling a battery out of your GoPro and plugging in a fresh battery and going back and flying. This battery is completely built in and so is this one. But now that you've got a little more familiarity with the with the product, let's take a look at some of the footage and then we'll come back and we'll do a little bit of a deeper dive. And the first footage I want to show you is what I think most FPV pilots are going to be most interested to see. This is 4K60 in the ultra wide field of view. Uh, and one of the criticisms I had of the DJI Osmo action, the very first one, was that its field of view wasn't wide enough. Uh, especially for FPV flying, we usually want that wide immersive field of view to give a sensation of speed and proximity. And we'll be doing a bench based FOV comparison so you can objectively see how they stack up but you can also just start to form an opinion here. I'm gonna withhold some of my opinions to let you just sort of form your own opinion. You are also seeing the native color profile. This is the standard color profile for the camera. It also can do what's called a vivid color profile. I, I'm not, I, I didn't even use it. I don't think anybody, like, no, don't, don't use it. And it's got uh, what's called a cinematic or log color profile where you manually color grade. You guys, the ultra wide field of view is so freaking wide that I'm actually gonna fly the camera on just wide field of view. I normally would never fly an action camera for FPV on less than the widest field of view possible, but it's so wide and fish-eyed, I actually kind of don't like it. Let's see how wide does. Yeah, okay, that is much more like what I feel like I'm used to seeing when I look at FPV footage. In fact, it almost feels like the Action 2's wide field of view is kind of the same as the super view field of view that I'm used to seeing from GoPros. But bear in mind that the DJI Action doesn't have any of the warping at the side of the image. Watch what happens to my face as I get towards the edge of the GoPro's image. That's super view, baby. Now we're gonna give the GoPro Hero 10 a shot and this flight will be in 4K60, not the 5.6K resolution that the Hero 10 is capable of. The reason for that is that you can't do super view in 5.6K. Uh, and I think most FPV pilots are gonna want super view for that increased vertical field of view. This clip is also significant because it's the first time you've had the chance to really see the GoPro Hero 10 footage compared to the DJI Action 2 footage. And my experience during editing was that I was looking at the action footage and thinking, oh, this looks pretty good. And then I looked at the Hero 10 footage and I was like, oh, this is a whole nother animal. Um, I, I feel like the color science in the GoPro is significantly better than that of the action. The action is just a little more contrasty and a little less sort of neutral uh, in its color profile, which you could fix some with post. Um, we'll take a look at the manually graded footage a little later in the video, but the standard color on the GoPro Hero 10, I feel like it just edges out. It manages to be saturated without being oversaturated, contrasty without losing detail in the shadows. It's just a really, really perfect balance. If we were to go in and sort of pixel peep the images, we would also see a big difference between these cameras. So here's just one example of a freeze frame that I've selected from later in the video. Both cameras are mounted on exactly the same quad being flown at exactly the same time. And you can just see a huge difference in the amount of detail that the GoPro is. Look at the grass. This is not motion blur or anything. I locked both cameras at the same ISO and shutter speed even. We're just seeing less detail, less resolution in the DJI Action 2. Here's another frame that clearly shows that the image from the DJI Action 2 is much softer than the image from the GoPro Hero 10. And in case you're tempted to say oh, that's because the GoPro Hero 10 is at 5.6K and the Action 2 is only at 4K, I don't think that's the whole story. My best guess as to what's happening here is that because the Action 2 has an ultra wide angle optical lens, when you are not using that ultra wide field of view, it has to crop in. And that means that anytime you're not using ultra wide field of view, you are not getting the full 4K resolution from the sensor. The GoPro by comparison, when it's in super view mode, it is using the full sensor size and the full optical width of its lens, which means that all of its resolution is in play. 
And that difference in the image quality between the two cameras extends not just to the resolution, but also to the, let's just call it the color science. What you're looking at right now is the GoPro Hero 10, and this is the flat color profile that it spits out. And frankly, I actually kind of like the look of the flat color profile by itself, but it's actually intended to be a low contrast uh, profile that makes it easier for a professional to color grade the image. Since I'm not an expert on color grading, I asked my editor to give me his opinion of the DJI Action 2. And of course he has tons of experience color grading Go profiles from me, uh, so he should know what he's talking about. He said that the colors were fairly accurate in the normal color profile, like every DJI product, there's a slight yellowish tint in the green, most prevalent in the midsection, but the highlights and the shadows seem to be fairly color accurate. However, the dynamic range of the camera is not even close in terms of freedom of color correction and grading to a GoPro. That there is a lot of detail lost in the highlights, and that when trying to bring detail up in the shadows, oftentimes other aspects of the image were affected with a generally unpleasing result. He said that it's not, it's not the worst he's ever seen, but it is nowhere near on the level of what you get from a GoPro's flat color profile. And to be fair, neither of these are a true log color profile, but the GoPro flat is pretty good. Uh, so that's gonna do it though for the battery. We are at 9% and that's all of it. It's like maybe four flights, it's done. And now I just gotta wait. It's gonna be about a half hour before it fully charges. It's gonna be in about five minutes, I should be able to get 20%. I'm done for now though. Now it's time to come to the two things that I think are probably gonna scare off the largest number of people. Of the people who are gonna be scared off, these are the things that are gonna scare them off. And the first one is the recording time. So obviously this has a built-in battery and the battery is non-replaceable, uh, which means that you're gonna hit record, you're gonna run it down, and then when it's run down, you're done. You're, you're gonna need to, I mean, you can charge it back up again by plugging it into the base, but that only goes so fast. Unlike the GoPros where you just pull a battery out, put a fresh battery in and you're back in the air. Now the recording time on this, I tested it depending on whether I was running at 4K or 1080 or 2.7, I tested it at between about 15 minutes and about 30 minutes. Uh, Realistically, when, when recording at 4K 60, I got three or four batteries, freestyle packs of, of three of about three minutes each before it was dead. And then, now some of that was time spent. You hit record, you set the quad down and you're waiting to fly. So again, 15 to 30 minutes, depending on the resolution that you're using. Uh, and then what? How long does it take to recharge? In about five minutes of recharging, you'll get about 20% battery life. You could probably fly on that, but I'd be worried the whole time that the battery is gonna run down in the middle of the flight and I was gonna lose footage. It takes about 30 minutes to do a full top up and the screen module can fully recharge the, uh, the camera basically two full times. Now, that's when they're brand new. Obviously the battery performance will degrade as time goes on and it'll only get worse from there. Now there are two other things that are gonna limit your recording time. And one of them is the size of the storage in the camera. So the camera has, uh, it's, it's nominally got, I think it's 32 gigs, but realistically, internally, you have a usable 22 gigs of data. And if you're recording at 1080p, that'll, that'll be plenty of storage to run the whole battery down. But if you're recording at 4K 60, you're gonna fill that up way before you run the battery down. Well, that's not true, because you run the battery down faster at 4K as well. Bottom line, you're not gonna get a ton of footage recorded at 22 with 22 gig of storage. And that storage is not expandable as far as I know. Now, you can put the, uh, screen module on and the screen module can have an SD card in it and you can choose to record directly to the SD card but you're not going to do that on a mini quad because you're not going to have the screen module on the quad you're going to have just the camera module so internal storage of about 22 gig is what you're working with and the other problem that you run into is getting the footage off the camera so this is the workflow that seems to work the best for me in a situation like this where i don't want to or can't easily take the camera out and connect it to the base to offload the footage 
uh, to an SD card. Uh, in this case, I've just got it <laughs> electrical taped because this magnetic clippy base will not hold in a crash. Ask me how I know. Uh, it, as this has been out for a little longer, there obviously will be 3D printed mounts for it, which will hold it more securely. But uh, it's not easy for me to take it out, and it might be the same situation for a 3D printed mount. In that case, I just used the app to offload it, and I've just offloaded all these clips. One of them is a three-minute 4K60 clip, so not a small clip. I've just offloaded them all in, in about five minutes. Uh, it goes at about 25 megabytes per second, so it's pretty speedy. Almost as speedy as offloading with USB, although not quite. The alternative is to offload them to the SD card here in the device, in the base station, but the problem with that is the time it takes, so check this out. We're gonna go here, and then internal storage, and we have the option to export to SD card. Ready, go. Uh, one of the most annoying things is that it doesn't show you the status bar, the progress bar. So you don't know how long it's going to take or how close to being done it is. And it's slow as hell. If anything, I think it's slower than offloading to Wi-Fi, although it's just a gut check. Okay, yeah, it is definitely slower than the Wi-Fi offload. I took all my stuff downstairs. I set up this double mount because I'm going to go put these on my car and do a test. It's probably been 10 minutes. It's still exporting to SD. I have no idea why it's so slow. It's not my SD card though, I guarantee you. This is a UHS-3 Class 10 whatever SD card. And when I read from the SD card to the computer, I get 35 megabytes per second. This should not be taking this long. It's one freaking flight. Okay, two flights. No, something's up. But I can't cancel it because, I don't know, I just have to wait. Ah, this is useless. I don't know. It's useless. The offload to SD card is useless. The last thing that is going to restrict your recording time is overheating. This camera overheats a lot and shuts down. I did a, rec I did a recording here in my, in my room. It's about 18, 19 degrees Celsius right now in here. And it recorded 4K60 for about 20 minutes. It was 4K30 for about 20 minutes before it overheated and shut itself down. I put the camera outside in the cold, it was maybe, uh, you know, 14 degrees Celsius, and it just recorded until the memory was full. So depending on your, your, that may be a problem for you, depending on your intended use case. For FPV, I don't think it's a big deal because with FPV, we usually have plenty of airflow for cooling. Now, one of the things you're going to want to do to help keep the camera from shutting down due to overheating is go into the settings and right here is the auto stop rec temp and you can change it from standard to high. The standard will get to about 40 degrees Celsius before it shuts down. The high will get to, I don't actually know, but more than 40 degrees Celsius. But if you live in Europe, if you live in the EU, then you're not gonna have access to the high option because apparently the EU has certain standards about the maximum temperature that a consumer device is allowed to reach because they don't wanna like b burn you. Uh, so if you live in the EU and you activate the camera from within the EU, then that option will be taken away. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention this camera has to be activated, the same as your Mavic or your DJI FPV goggles. Unlike a GoPro, where you just buy it, you use it, and you don't have to register it, this thing, if you don't activate it, it gives you like three or five uses, and then it just stops working until you activate it. Thanks, DJI. So when you activate it, they will look at what country you are coming from and decide whether they're going to apply those European regulations. So, if you're in Europe, but there was a way for you to make it look like you were not in Europe when you activated it. As we think about the criticisms of the DJI Action 2, I think it's worth going back to think about the beloved Hero 5 session and see that it's got some of those same criticisms, notably the battery. So the battery on the Action 2 is not replaceable, and neither was the battery on the Hero 5 Session. And I know a lot of people whose Hero 5 Sessions were retired when the battery would no longer hold a charge. At least on the DJI Action 2, you can get one of these little mods to plug into the bottom and keep it going during the day. With the Session, people who could afford it would just buy four or five Sessions, and then as one battery ran down, they'd set it aside or put it on a charger, and they'd just switch to the next camera. They had to buy four or five Sessions whole cameras to get through a day of shooting. With the Action 2, you'll be buying more of these. 
There's this touchscreen version, which has a battery built in, and there's a separate battery-only version without a screen. It's about $100 cheaper than this, but nobody, I don't think they've announced a price for it separately, so I don't know how much it'll be. Surely it'll be more expensive than a spare battery for your GoPro, but you do have the option to load up on batteries and keep this camera going through a day of shooting, as long as you're willing to wait for it to charge up in between each run, because you can't just take the battery out and swap a new one in. What about durability? Yes, the Action 2 has a screen on the back, and yes, it's Gorilla Glass, and yes, it's going to break some of the time. Even Gorilla Glass will break. But at least when the screen on the back of the Action 2 breaks, you will have another screen. You won't have to be praying that the Wi-Fi on the camera is working so you can connect it with your phone so that you can configure it. So I'm not too worried about it. It'll be inconvenient if the screen on the back of the Action 2 breaks, but not a deal breaker. I probably would not take advantage of my Best Buy warranty when that happened, because I've got this thing. And if the camera does break, you can buy just the camera and not the screen and the battery. So how much will that be? I don't think anybody knows yet, but it's something. Speaking of durability, how durable is it? Because I did crash it. Way to go, Bardwell. First flight. Okay, don't crash is the takeaway. You will lose your camera. I mean, I did literally land like literally right on top of it. So, I mean, I don't know what you expected. Let's talk about stabilization. The DJI Action 2 has two forms of stabilization. One is called Horizon Steady, and that's what you're looking at now. And when you're using Horizon Steady, it is stabilized, but in addition, it locks the horizon flat. So if I take this selfie stick and I pivot it, we're at about a 45 degree angle right now, but it's gonna hold the footage level. Now that's obviously useful when you're doing a handheld vloggy walk and talk like this, but you might also use it for a Cinewhoop shot. Sometimes when they do Cinewhoop style shots without a lot of steep banks and turns, uh, they'll use Horizon Lock. We'll test this in flight in just a minute. Now the Hero 10 also has Horizon Lock, uh, and that's what you're looking at right now. The difference is that the Hero 10's Horizon Lock can run at up to 5.7K, the full resolution of the camera, whereas in the DJI Action 2, you gotta go down to 2.7K resolution. You know, only you can decide if that's a deal breaker for you. And lastly, we're looking at the GoPro Hero 8, which I wanted to include in this comparison because it's probably the best value, performance per dollar, of GoPros you can buy today. It's in the 300 to 350-ish dollar range, I believe, and has really good image quality, but it doesn't have horizon lock. It does have stabilization, though. So let's see how well this horizon lock works. I'm just gonna start running, and cameras are gonna start bouncing around, and we'll see how steady the horizon really looks. You all didn't think I could run this fast, did you? You have no idea how fast I am. Fast as fuck, boy. Let's just see how it responds to a rotation. So, how am I gonna do this? Uh, let's just rotate it. We're at about 45 degrees. We're at 90 degrees. 270 degrees, we're ups uh, upside down, rather. Oh, it's 180. 270. And we're back around again. I have no idea what that's going to do to the footage, but well, we'll find out. So the first thing we're going to see here is some f relatively smooth flying. No flippy flops. Well, I, I did flippy flop a tiny bit at the end. But generally no flippy flops, as if you were kind of flying a Cinewhoop looking for a horizon lock enabled cinematic experience. Uh, I know I've said the word cinematic like five times and I'm just flying around my yard, but you you get the gist. We wanna see how the cameras handle horizon lock. And so for example, right there, to, go, to climb up over those power lines, I pitched back pretty hard and the cameras had to respond to that. Um, as I descend, know that I'm pitching forward and look for how the cameras respond to that. And also look for how much the camera is lagging my quadcopter's movements and how out of sync the video is between the two of them. They're both mounted on the same quad and doing the same thing. So any differences you see in this footage is the camera stabilization algorithm at work. I'm not even gonna try and call this one. I think it's pretty close and I think it's very, very subtle, the differences between them. They both seem to be doing a pretty good job, at least when you're flying relatively sedately. Hmm? 
But I was really curious to see what happened if you pushed the horizon lock even further. So I started flying more aggressively. And I did this spin around this tree. And, and I realized as I was halfway through the yaw spin that I wasn't actually pitched over that hard. I was mostly pitched forward. So I did a snap roll. And here you can see the DJI Action 2 can do a full 360 without breaking horizon lock, whereas the GoPro Hero 10, whoa, power line, Joshua. The GoPro Hero 10 can go only go about 45 degrees before horizon lock breaks. Let's give it another try. See if we can break horizon lock. Can we break it? I'm, I'm rolled over hard here, trying to just roll over as hard as I could. And they actually both did a pretty good job. I don't know, maybe the, maybe the G-forces are throwing off the horizon sensing, huh? Now, there were some rumors that the DJI Action 2's stabilization couldn't handle hard freestyle moves, so I put it up in the air and did some more aggressive flippy flops. Horizon lock is off. This is just the regular stabilization, and it's hyper smooth high, but not hyper smooth boost on the GoPro Hero 10. I don't think people use GoPro Hero uh, Boost for freestyle. And you can judge for yourself how it did. I'm also going to leave the motor noises in so you can kind of hear when the move actually begins versus when you see it begin and end because of course the stabilization affects that. So that brings us to the end of the video, and as always, the question, should you buy it? And I think the answer to that question is gonna depend on how much you are looking for a replacement for the Hero 5 session. Because as I've looked at the footage from this camera through the editing process, when I first saw it, I thought it was pretty good. And then as I saw it side by side with the footage from the GoPro, I thought it didn't look as good. I don't think the footage from the DJI Action 2 looks anywhere near as good as the footage from the Hero 10. And the more you are going to do your own color grading, the more that difference is going to come out. The footage, the normal color profile footage straight out of the cameras, it's debatable, I think, which one you're going to like better. But as soon as you go into flat or log color profile and start trying to tweak it, the, the DJI just, I mean, it's better than the normal color profile, but it is nowhere near as good as GoPro flat. But a Hero 10 weighs a lot. A Hero 8 weighs a lot. And for all the benefits that those cameras have over this one, and there are many, not this one, that one, <laughs> the, for all the benefits those cameras have over this one, they, if you need that 55-ish grams of weight, the downsides of the DJI Action 2 are not insurmountable by any means. And so many people were thrilled with this camera because it had not the best image quality, but good enough image quality and extremely low weight and reasonable durability. And in that sense, I think the DJI Action 2 is a worthy successor to the Hero 5 Session, but it is not a replacement for a GoPro Hero 8 or even a, maybe a 7. It's certainly not a 10 at a price of $500. That's going to do it for this video. And normally this is the part of the video where I would say affiliate links are down in the video description. And boy, I would really love to use some affiliate links because this camera cost me $500 and the Hero 10 cost me $500. And I'm not complaining. I love my job. But that's a lot of freaking money to spend on one freaking video. And the reason I am not going to tell you about affiliate links here is because if you live in the United States, the only place you should buy this camera is Best Buy because you can buy the Best Buy Geek Squad protection. And then if when you break the camera, as I did on the first day I owned it, you can just go back to Best Buy and get another one, as I did on the second day that I owned it. Sorry, Rotor Riot, Race Day Quads, Get FPV, Pyrodrone, everywhere, every FPV shop selling this camera. No one should buy it from you because they can't get the warranty. If you live outside the United States and you don't have access to that great Best Buy warranty, you can buy it from DJI directly and you can buy DJI Care. And that gives you, I think it's three replacements a year, which again, you will earn that back guaranteed if you fly this camera. It's not a slight on the camera's durability. Every action camera gets smashed to shit when you fly at FPV. Don't buy one without insurance. So I guess what I'll say instead is join my Patreon for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. Link in the video description. Thank you so much. Happy flying. 
are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.